I also ended up with a life-size G-Men standee because of these events. <laughs> like, did I you bring a- it to the event? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> um, so I just had a G-Men standee. Like I would, when we would have meetings at work, I would like put them in the corner over here by the door to see if anybody noticed. Nobody did. Um, but it's just like, it's a life-size demon cardboard. I was like, I don't know. I don't want this. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Craze Cast, the podcast run by the fans for the fans that brings it close to the action. My name is Roxy and today I'm joined by my fellow host, Jay. Hi. To keep up with all our content, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Craze Mag and YouTube The Craze. If you enjoy our content, uh, please consider helping to support our organization through Ko-Fi. Our team is 100% volunteer-based, so any donation helps us out quite a bit. So uh, head over to ko-fi.com backslash the craze where you can donate however much you please. If you are watching this on YouTube, please, before we begin, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to our YouTube channel and catch our next episodes for whenever we upload and hit the bell for notifications for whenever we do upload new videos. So it's a morning. How are we? <laughs> How are we doing? Um, I'm moving in a few days. So as you can see, the contents of my life is behind me I was on just my like, bed. There's no more NCT poster. Nope. And it's a <laughs> for the, now. The AT's flag is only up there because I haven't gotten to it yet. So, but for this now. wall is disgusting. It needs to be painted. It's just a bad time. I don't like moving. <laughs> no one does, honestly. <laughs> I don't know how I'm surviving on little sleep right now because BTS was last night which set list was really good really fun but you know how it is staying up at a weird hour at in the middle of the night it's just like I'm tired <laughs> but I was gonna say by last night do you mean this morning oh god you're right <laughs> see I'm tired <laughs> this is probably the most scuffed it's gonna be for a bit just because I'm like what happened what happened last night anyways at least it wasn't till like 6 a.m at least it was till 5 a.m instead but still it's like anyways what are we talking about this week (laughs) this week um we're just gonna talk about like uh k-pop events in general but not like not concerts we're talking like fan run events because i know at least for me going to these things would cause like a lot of anxiety for like the first time (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. So we just thought we'd talk about it since we have experience. And Jay was actually just at a BOBA event yesterday. Mm -hmm. So so just a context for that event, there's going to be a whole mini video vlog coming out to the YouTube channel and as well as a coverage article. But yeah, um, I am, uh, I'm going to pull out something in a bit shortly that's going to surprise Roxy like how I did with the Stray Kids um light stick a while ago but I am a very active boba event person I enjoy these types of events and I think just to explain um for those who have never been to one or haven't seen one um basically you um the most recent one that I went to was an 80s event and if you're watching the video I'm showing the cup sleeve um Right. on the episode which I went to an 80s one I helped out my best friend was running the event and so um this was the little incentive I'll show you the other stuff but basically I don't want to bend it too much but basically like it is a cup sleeve you buy a drink it um for this event we had special drinks that we made which was a black cat and it was an all black charcoal drink and I'll show the, I'll send the pictures for whoever is editing to edit it in. And they had another drink that was called Deja Boo, which is a play on words, of course, but because they are similar to 80s and it was Halloween uh, like themed, it fit the whole vibe of the event. But you usually get like, if you buy a boba drink, um, I don't know if other places do custom drinks, but if you buy a drink, you get the free cup sleeve for the event. And 
a lot of these events could be anniversaries, it could be birthdays, um, whichever the case. But I think it's just a fun and neat thing. And you get to see people who are a part of your fandom just come out and support and be like, oh, there's actually this many people who are in my city or close by to the city. Like, because I know people would drive in to, you know, hang out and be like, oh, these are my people, you know? These are the people who I hang out with and everything like that. So that's pretty much it. And it's just like, sometimes it doesn't even have to be boba. I know in Korea, what they do are more cafe type events. So instead of boba, it's a coffee or a tea, which those cup sleeves look so nice, my, in my opinion, because they're just one solid like sleeve. They don't fold. And I'm just like, oh, I want that. It's just hard to find that here or get them shipped here or it's See- expensive. I feel like the cup sleeve events are fairly new, you know, as Mm -hmm. someone that's been involved in like the K-pop fandom for Mm -hmm. five years, six years at this point, Christ. Um, Back in the day, there was like none of this. There were not enough people to like put an event together in a certain area. And I live like near, um, not like in the town, but surrounding towns that have like very high Korean populations. And like, I don't remember this ever being a thing. I feel like mm-hmm. it just started like maybe in 2019. Yeah. And yeah. the thing about it too, is that sometimes I feel like it's really difficult to find information, mm-hmm. um, especially because like, there's so many different fandoms now that it's like really hard to figure out like if there's somebody running one for the one that you're in. So like, I've never heard of an 80s event in the DMV area Mm -hmm. out here. Mm -hmm. So like the only thing I've ever seen is like BTS events, which I think is interesting because there's a pretty high population around here. So I would think it would be one of the places that has Mm -hmm. like a lot of variety, but maybe I'm just like not looking in the right place. Well, also, I think it also comes down to social media, right? And how, how active some of these groups are. You know that BTS there's going to be a huge following regardless. And I feel like that is a much easier place to have word of mouth or like find things in, on social media to find events. So as far as I'm aware, my my best friend, she was one of the only AT, like 18s or 80s events that is happening in Southern California. I know there's more starting to um, peer around, but when we did the very first event, um, I knew people who drove down um, from more of the LAOC area down to where I'm at. And um, they're like, we don't get to see this. And so it kind of is too, it's just like, how how do you find that? And you you have to dig deep within your own community or even just if you're looking for something, tweet out, I was like, are there any events happening in this city? If so, what's going on? And I think it just, it also ties into, are you part of any group chats or any like those type of fan community groups, if you get what I mean, to know that these events are happening. See, I wonder if that's the only way though, because now that I'm old, um, those like the the group things like freak Mm -hmm. me out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like yeah. afraid of them. That can I've, be intimidating. I've seen too many, too much shit go south in my life. Like I've been right. on online communities since I was like probably 12. So right. like I'm just so used to shit blowing up that now if I like see one, I'm scared. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And definitely there comes a lot of hesitancy when you're trying to look for these types of events. Um your other best bet is probably thinking do these boba shops or cafes, do they have their own social media and are they promoting that? So I know for this particular location, this one has paired up with, they've now done BTS, they've done twice and they've done 80s before. And um, I know some of the upcoming ones that are coming. So, um, you know, there's a lot of more other groups that are starting to filter in and come through, but if they have a social media presence and if they're a bigger chain, you might be able to find it that way. Or your other best bet would have to be going to the actual boba shop and seeing if they have something, you know, on the, on the glass door, door, yes. Or window to see if, um, you know, they'll have an event there. And I feel like that's the other way how I knew it. I think I stumbled upon mine was just like, oh, they're having one that's cool let me go check it out and then lo and behold now there's like more coming through 
I do think so for, for anybody that is like me and is like afraid of online fan communities for whatever reason, uh, one way to do that, because I do know of like a few cafes around my area, whether it be boba shops or even just like, sometimes it's just dessert cafes that are like in a Korean dominant area. They tend to post on social media when they're having those events. So like, if you're interested to see what's around, I suggest following them on social media. That's how I found out about a BTS one. I wasn't able to go, but like I went on Instagram and they're like, hey, we're doing this like mm-hmm. drunk cook birthday event. I was like, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I and also, if it's an option, I want to say some groups who are out there, if you can't make it or if you can't do, they um, I've seen a few organizers where they're like, well, we do shipping. If you want the cup sleeve and you just can't make it, definitely you can purchase the bundle for this amount and, you know, order it that way. So that way you still also feel like you are a part of it and you just don't feel like you're alone. I know that that would be cool just because if it's not in an accessible area, at least you're like, oh, at least I have this. And, you know, a lot of these organizers, they have very pretty designs, honestly. Uh, Like, it's just like, so it's like, it's something to feel like you're a part of your community, even though you can't really necessarily attend. And I mean, where can you get, you know, fan-made merch like this sometimes? Yeah, that's also hard to access. I was just going through my phone to go to one of these shops that I've seen Mm -hmm. just to like see how recently they've had something on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there it is. So here's an example of one. I know it's not that great. But it's like they did a whole post about this event on their feed. And like, not even that, but they also have like in their stories. So like, Mm -hmm. if you see up there, I'm like giving away my location, but (laughs) right there, um, this is just like one of the shops in the area that does that. So if you like want to attend an event, I think probably, well, the best way is to like connect with the community, but sometimes- that's difficult to do. I've never been to a boba event before. I'll be honest. (laughs) That's the one thing I haven't done. I think, I mean, if you have the opportunity and you get the chance, I definitely say go because another cool thing about these events is that some people will have vendors on, um, on these boba events and you can find a lot of like fan made like merch and I'll show you an example. I bought this one yesterday because this person is a multi. And I think that's a good thing too. If you find happen to find um, a boba event and um, they have vendors not only tailored to the group, but also do multi stuff. And so just in case if you can't necessarily find, you know, it's like, oh, this is something I can't find here for my favorite other favorite groups. Here's it is. But I bought this really cute sh- shadow box. Really, really cute. It was one of, um, she does um, a ton of uh, groups. She did, she did an army one. She does um, a stray kids one. There was an 18 one that was super cute. So it's just like, where can you find, if you're watching on the video, you should really watch the video for the podcast. Where can you find something like this? And for 25 bucks, that's not bad. You know, it's really not that bad to find really cute like merch and other things like there's also this one which was really cute that was a tote bag and $15 it's just like not only are you supporting your local or like more local artists and shop owners it's just like you these are somewhat one of a kind you can't find them like if you were to go to a concert sometimes if you want to buy like some of these people will bring them to concerts and sell but that's less likely because they don't want to get in trouble and get kicked out. <laughs> right. So it's like, I feel like I used to buy my, uh, like I have like four glitter slogans for BTS mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. like the fan sites used to sell outside of right. the venue, but now they cracked down on that shit. Oh, yeah. When we went to speak yourself in 2019, I did not see one person selling shit. And oh, I was like, no. bro, I want some like cool sugar stuff that right. I don't have to pay 50 bucks for. Right. And, like, so I do think that is a way that they've sort of like shifted the market in a sense, Mm -hmm. because like you could go to concerts and get a ton of shit. I feel Mm -hmm. like even at like KCON, unless Mm -hmm. you have a booth, you can't really 
be silly. You can't find it. Yeah, you can't really find these t- types of things. And I want to also mention, like, even KCON in itself, even though, yes, there's a concert aspect, that's another community type event where even if you can't make it to the concert, go out to the convention, right? Yeah, except a booth is really fucking expensive. <laughs> we would know. We would know. We ran one. We co-ran one. And we shared one. And that was... That's a lot. But at the same time, it's like you get to see these small vendors and you get to support their business and what they're trying to do. Um, And these Volvo events, cafe events are another opportunity to do that as well, because I mean, why not? It's just like, where are you going to see stuff like that? You know, there are people who are selling Polaroids. There are people who are selling tumblers. I would have sent two pictures if they didn't sell out, Roxy, because I know you would have probably picked some up from yesterday. But um. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's just fun to be at. And also knowing like, if you feel like there's some people that I know that went alone, there's a lot of people who went in groups too. But if you feel alone, at least, you know, there's somebody who can connect with that's just like, oh, you're in line waiting for the, you know, your, your chance to order. I was like, oh, who's your bias, you know? And that's an easy way to like connect with somebody and just talk and feel like, oh, okay, at least there's somebody I can talk to at this event and I don't feel as alone either. That's the thing too about stuff like this. So as a person, like I am not very like socially motivated. I'm not good in social situations in general, but like, so like if I go to a bar by myself mm-hmm. and a person tries to talk to me I'm like what the fuck who were yeah, you like, like no. d- <laughs> what the fuck um <laughs> yeah if anybody like if I'm like at the grocery store if I'm like doing like normal human things and a person tries to talk to me I'm like no Mm-mm. yeah Back small up. talk is not a thing there <laughs> no like don't just you don't perceive me I don't exist but mm-hmm. like when you go to events like this it's there's like the the common thread that everybody has so like uh, an example is that uh, the CEO, Connie and I, we ran a booth at one of these, one of these, uh, BTS events, I believe it was in June. So it was like, a an anniversary event. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't like a boba event, but it was outside like a food court that had, that was in like Koreatown essentially. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. uh, but there were a lot of vendors there and it was because it was like a BTS specific event. Most of the vendors had BTS stuff. And like when we got there to set up, just people just like start talking to you. It's because, mm-hmm. you know, you have this common thread that it's just easier to like be social. Mm-hmm. So then suddenly it's just like normal to have like a regular conversation about stuff. And, it, you know, you can weave in, you know, biases, you can weave in music and like, it's just something that makes social interaction so much easier and that's coming from somebody that fucking hates social interaction. <laughs> I'm like, I fucking hate talking to people. Yeah. So it's just, uh, it's a very interesting experience. And I think it's also another way to connect to people because like online people can be like mean, mm-hmm. but people won't be mean to your face. <laughs> like, no, I guarantee. no, 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 no. Yeah. Um, I think it's also, I want, I did want to ask you, like, how did you feel running a booth? You know, just because it is BTS. Uh, you know, it is BTS, you know, that there are going to be a good amount of people coming through. How was that like? Because I was on the other end where I helped at an event, but being a vendor, like, how does that, you know, how do you feel like, what were you like nervous? Was it kind of difficult to maintain, you know, the flow of people coming through? What was it like? Yeah, so I'm not, the type of person that's good at running things like because we did the KCON booth and you have to like grab people's attention Mm -hmm. or just like engage them when they come up so like I don't like initiating discussion Mm -hmm. so it is difficult for me uh but not for Connie so she is very extroverted (laughs) she is a powerhouse at this kind of thing because like a person comes to you like hey hi oh my god who's your bias do you want to look at this thing like she's like very good at doing that so more, more so I was just keeping shit organized while she was doing most of that, right. mm-hmm. but it's, it is kind of a difficult thing if you're not outgoing in general yeah. or like good at faking being outgoing because, you know, mm-hmm. that's a developed skill. So that's like not where I'm good. So yeah, there was some anxiety around that, but at the same time, it's like less so than if you were like, 
I'm trying to think of a good metaphor. If you had to, like, if you're a salesperson, you got to pitch something. Right. Or like if you're collecting donations and you Mm -hmm. have to be like, Hey, hey," you know, the people are here because they like the stuff that you have. So it breaks down a little bit of a wall, but it's still kind of like kind of nerve wracking. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, what was hard about yes, doing the Boba event is like differentiating between who's here for the event and who's just here to get Boba, you know, cause we've had, I want to say a lot of people, like you see people from a young age to a much older age, you know, there's parents, there's families that come through. Cause they're just like, well, my kid, like I've seen one where like, oh, my kid really loves eighties, you know, for example. And, you know, I saw this might as well have just seen that. I, there was another family that I was just like, oh, like, I don't know of eighties, but I know my other family members know ATs. So like, how does this work? And I was like, oh, sure. Like, um, and they were like, we don't know exactly if they like ATs, but can I call them? And can I like confirm? And I was just like, yeah, go ahead. Just, can you just like not be in the line to, you know, block other customers, but like, yeah, sure. Go ahead. But yeah, it was also hard to, um, like some people just don't acknowledge you. <laughs> you know like I think that's the sad part about it it's just like you you could at least just say hi or like oh like is there a line what is this for you know something as simple and courteous as that but you know that I think that's the hard part of engaging people I just made sure for me it's like oh you know when they're pat like if they're not going to be really staying long it's just like you know thank you for coming that's the least or thank you for coming to my booth or something like that. Cause I know there's some vendors out there who are a little bit more on the pricier side that you're like, I can't afford you, <laughs> but you know, thank you for coming and sharing your stuff, but I have to pass for now, at least for now. But yeah, I think that's the hard part about doing these events and you're not really that much of a social person. And it's like that that's anxiety inducing too. But I feel like also it is your, um, if you're the event host, it's your responsibility to also make people feel welcome, you know? So it's just like, that's cool. Was it, so like for the event that you did, it was just an anniversary event, like at a cafe or? Um, I would say, yeah, because uh, we were just vendors, but they were giving out like uh, some free stuff. Oh, okay, um, and cause... there was like an air. So it was, it's like a food court place mm-hmm. uh, where this is. So um, it was more like you go inside and there's like these options to eat. And there was a okay. boba place in there too. So they also had like a setup area where they had like a special like picture taking. Oh, like, okay. Setup okay. And stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit different than like the boba events, but I think it was very unique too. Yeah, I've never seen that happen, at least. Uh, like, <clears throat> I think the only one other place that I've been to, I, and I had to travel to this one, was, um, this sounds weird. Some people might think this is weird for this particular food item, but it was like an egg sandwich place. And it was like using like the Korean bread. You know, like you've had brick toast before, right? Yeah, so it was like the Korean toast. Yeah, the Korean toast, except like they put like egg in it and other things. Um, The couple of times when I went to that particular, I guess it's a chain too. But when I went to that particular location, there was um, the incentive of that uh, restaurant is they had photo booths that you you, like, not only can you buy, um, not only can you buy the sandwich or the drink from the store, you know, you could pay like an extra couple of dollars to take these. Um, it's uh, like this type of Japanese, the, what is it called? Purikura, I think is what it's called. Um, you can take those types of photos and just hang out with your friends. And then also they had a photo wall of photo strips from their event. And um, I think that's different. Like to see food places do it aside, that's not a boba like a boba or cafe centered um or coffee shop centered I think that's fun and I feel like we should do that more often yeah come down on it <laughs> please <laughs> it's like you know how people would come out for food I think that it's really hard to organize because I've never had to organize any of this but like I know the event we went to was run by 
I can make sure I get the name right. Uh, BTS DMV events. So it's like a whole, oh, okay. it's um, a whole group sort of, I mean, at least I know who runs it. So, you mm. know, we talked to the person that runs it. I don't know how much help she has, but I know that she does do like the majority of the BTS events in, in, uh, the like DC area. Mm-hmm. So it's just, I can't imagine like the work that goes into first, you have to talk to the venue to make sure that like it works. And then you got to get, you know, everything set up. Mm-hmm. So like, it takes a, it takes a ton of work and I don't know how many people like have that in them to do. <laughs> um, so while I'll talk about it. Um, so I also had this one, which was twice, which is really cute cup sleeve. Um, the the runner the host of this one was planning six months ahead already but you know you could do it in a shorter time period um but it also you have to factor in the time it treat it it takes for the freebies which is i'm holding them up in the video so that's why i said watch the video please um which is really cute because it's like where can you see stuff like this and they're they're really nicely made um day of I helped set up for that one or two as well but I didn't stay as long but like it's definitely like you have to gather all your things over like a certain period of time and you know the more nice you want it to be of course the more money you're gonna have to spend like this is, these ain't cheap it's not cheap at all and it depends on where are you getting these things printed are you outsourcing it from out of the country or are you doing it in how or like are doing it in house at your own home or are you going through a printing company within the US which shipping sucks right now everywhere <laughs> okay first of all don't do it out of the country right now cuz uh there's a supply chain issue so you're never going to get yeah. it yeah um <laughs> like unless you plan ahead like months in unless advance. you got 9 months ahead at this point cuz yeah. i got shit off in a container off of california right now that i'm never going to see until like 2022 at this oh point oh my god so. that sucks like and so it's just like if for those who are considering wanting to do it because i think i think if you're in an area and you're not in a place that does these events be the start do it but recognize it does take money it does take a lot of planning, the logistics of having to coordinate with the venue, like Roxy said, are you going to have a special drink menu? Some of these events um, also are partnered with charities, which I think is also a cool thing, like more, like more events like this, because in Korea, you know, we're used to saying, let's, let's donate rice or let's donate to these local charities right before a concert, which I think is cool. You know, but if you want to do something more local and support any local charities, why not? Right. I think that's really cute to do. And it's fun, but also recognize it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I know these girls that have been planning this. I'm sure that they've been planning these for months. I don't even want to know how long the BTS girls um, that do it, do the ones near me plan for theirs because I'm just like, their event, um, when I went to it, they had raised over twenty four hundred dollars from just just the event, and then they also not including you know the portions of from the store itself, but they had given over close to one thousand wristbands, and they ran out of cup sleeves. I'm just like holy shit, (laughs) you know, it's just like, of course, I'm not surprised. But also, it takes a lot of work. So if you're going to start, start off small, do what you have to do, work with your thing. But you know, I think it's a good, it's a good way to get people around your area. And it's also how you promote it. It really is how you promote it at this end. It kind of, it kind of gives me like more flashbacks to doing um, fan sites. Um, uh-huh. cause I would help a lot with like getting the photo cards and shit. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so much for what, for people. I mean, like I had extra shit laying around from four years ago that we put in a bin at this, at this event. We're like, it's free. Please take it. Please yeah. take this shit off my hands. I'm so, I had like stacks of like Yugi photo cards and I was uh-huh. like, please send them my way. I know people, <laughs> <laughs> I know some people. I can, I can figure something out. 
Yeah, but I'll, I also I'll connect offline with you. <laughs> yeah, I also ended up with a life size G men standee because of these events. <laughs> like, didn't you give that to me? No. So the wait, origins, wait, or she, didn't she get another one or, no, or they? The, I'm sorry. The origin, the origin of this G men stand that haunted me for months, is that me and went to an event in DC, uh, like mm-hmm. a G men birthday event in. Mm-hmm probably 2019 mm-hmm. um and they were like gonna throw this g-man standy away and mm-hmm. they're like can i have it so mm-hmm. they took the g-man standy home and then when moving in 2020 it was like i don't want this roxy you take it and i'm like all right so did I you bring a- it to the event <laughs> <laughs> yeah i did <laughs> um so i just had a g-man standy like i would when we would have meetings at work, I would like put them in the corner over here by the door to see if anybody noticed. Nobody did. Um, but it's just like, it's a life-size demon cardboard. I was like, I don't know. I don't want this. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. have any reason to have this. I'm not demon bias. And like, so when we, uh, when Connie was like, we're going to do this BTS event, I was like, I'm going, somebody's going to take this off my hands. I yeah. can't, I've had this G-Man for like a year. I don't want him anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause it's just like, huh? It, it is kind of like, you know, some, for some people they'll, they want it, you know, and that's cool. More power to you. If you ha- want it, I hope you just have the room for it. <laughs> um, they take up so much room for what? They do. They do. And I'm just like, these are huge. I would like um, pull him out and scare my parents. Like he's just so, it was so big. You know, I was just thinking about it. It was just like, imagine putting that out. Like, you know, if you don't want to interact on Halloween, just put aside, take candy and take me with you. <laughs> you know, because if you don't want it, that would be funny. You're freaking but, out all my new neighbors. What the fuck is wrong with this girl? She's got a demon standing outside of her like, <laughs> But you know what? You can, like, if a BTS stan wanted one, if an army wanted one, they'd be like, oh, this is free? I'm gonna take it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, we did get rid of him, and I was like, thank Jesus. I was like, the the girl that took him was, like, waffling about it. I was like, please, I will do anything. If, please. And, like, she was, like, worried that it didn't fit in the car. I was like, no, look, I'll show you. And I took him out, and I folded him mm-hmm. where he was, and I was like, look, please. I don't Yeah. <laughs> Or it's just like, if you come across that, maybe um, donating it to local groups that are doing these events and um, doing something like that. Um, I know that there are some people who aren't even vendors. They they just come to support. And um, obviously with the pandemic, it changed the dynamic of how we do everything, right? Unfortunately. Um, and there was a good hold on these events. And when they finally returned, I think the first event near me that came back was um, a Namjoon and Jungkook birthday event. And there were girls there who were in line and they're like, um, they're giving away freebies themselves, like their own fan made freebies and their own photo cards like this one. It's not an official one. Um and they're like, oh, I was supposed to originally give these out for free during Map of the Soul, but we all know what happened. And so sometimes, like, even if you just go, you never know. Like, a lot of people will also donate for you to, like, you know, they'll have little goodie bags filled with candy or, like, other photo cards. And not necessarily if it's not in your budget, you know, if you can't afford, you know, to buy an album or anything like that. It's like, here, there's something, like, you could make a cute little shadow box or like have a little area on your shelf. I was like, oh, these are all the stuff I collected. Like, like I said, I am a big boba person. I have a ton in here that are just like, oh God, this is not gonna make a nice sound. Okay, never mind. I got it. Um it it makes up for the fact that, you know, I don't like to fold mine, but I have quite a few. I the, the first one that the soap it's one so is cute. so cute. It's oh so cute. It's so cute. I know the artist for this too. Um, uh, but like, yeah, it's just like, where can you see these? And I hope to one day. Was it you that um we were talking about like having a little box where you would put your tickets? Or I forgot who said that. 
or you had a little something where you would put your ticket stubs, right? I made, um, I made a shadow box yeah. for KCON. So I put my KCON tickets and the, the press mm-hmm. passes that we've gotten. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that is fun to decorate with, honestly. Mm-hmm. And especially I fucking love shadow boxes. So I have a shit ton of these things that I still need to put in one mm-hmm. of those. But I think that's a great way to like, you know, have a memory of, yeah. of this. And it is true about these events is that like, there are a lot of freebies. So I feel mm-hmm. like- what used to be at concerts has moved toward this yeah because there was a time where you could get a shit ton of freebies at concerts and you still do but it's like not as much and these events are ways for fans to connect well especially while we don't have concerts like <laughs> right and i think it also like i think it just tides the hunger for the <laughs> these types of events and like i know like for some people they don't want to necessarily be super social but it's just like i just want to even just vibe i don't even if i don't want to talk to people i just want to vibe and i know like returning when these bow events are starting to pop up again i was just like i feel like that sense of huh, you know it's just like these are like I miss being surrounded by just hearing people either singing along to the songs with the music or just even like freaking out like oh my god like oh how are you I haven't seen you in a long time stuff like that and I know we're creeping up into concert season now <laughs> you know we're we're creeping back up into having these concerts at least here in the U.S. and in Europe um yeah they're starting I got to happen. epic high tickets so I still need to get mine. I got F, I got Eric Nam, <laughs> but um, and BTS. But like to be in that environment of being excited to you know be around all of these people, you know, I feel like it's so cool to just go to. So it's just like again, go if you can find one. Honestly, sometimes it's just like if you search up, you know, your favorite group and your city something will pop up something is bound to pop up and with how you how these people are promoting it you never know you might not know you look up in the next weekend shit you know oh it's right there I think it's also if you're part like if you have a favorite group like obviously right now October for BTS is Jimin's birthday right so if you look around and a certain like your idol's favorite or their your idol's anniversary or birthday, you might be able to find these events. And um, fan sites, they also, like if you follow official fan sites, they also pair up with local people within the city and they'll post their cities. It's like, okay, LA and New York are going to be the US cities and it's going to be at this location. So there you go too. You never know, like, depending on how you follow what you follow you'll be able to find something and I'm just like I want to host one but I do I do also want to highlight too as somebody that's been to one of these and is like old now um there are a lot of people like there is a huge diversity of people that go through oh, yeah. things so when we're at um when we were doing the booth we would see kids with with parents that are chaperoning there are women that are in their like forties or fifties by themselves browsing. Like there's a huge diversity of age and oh, yeah. of not necessarily gender, I feel like, but I mean, just like a lot of different type of people. And what's so nice about it is that in general, most people are just like not judgmental at all about it. No. So you could be a woman in your forties by yourself and people be like, Hey, check out my shit. Like, it's great. Yeah. 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 Like if anything, Oh, I can't show it because it's still being washed. One of the cool vendors that I saw older, she's a little bit older, like maybe a couple years older than me and Roxy, but she does face masks <laughs> and she did like a BTS one. And I'm just like, oh, that's cool. And she also, I think she's also a healthcare worker. She also came with like coverings for your hair too. And I'm just like, you, and honestly, a lot of these people are just doing it because they like to make stuff or they like to, you know, support their group that way. And I'm just like, heck yeah, why not? And so it's just like, if you get to go, go, that is just, I feel like we're just scratching the surface on terms of, in terms of like community events, because what are like some other non 
K-pop or non-concert events. There's also fan meetings, technically. There's also like people have been doing this where they organize like um, dance nights or party nights. Mm, we actually mm-hmm. went to one in DC that was like a K-pop dance night. Oh, how was that? A I've never years been. Ago. To- how was that? Because I've never been to one. So because it was a couple of years ago, there were not a lot of people there, Mm -hmm. Um, but it was really fun because all the drinks, you know, this is an adult thing. So they had alcohol, all the drinks uh, were like K-pop song based Mm -hmm. um, and they were playing, you know, music videos and stuff. So my friends and I just like had a fun time, even Mm -hmm. if it was only just like a few of us there, it was, you know, it was cool. Yeah, It makes me sad that there weren't more people there, but if they did it, today there might be so this was like in 2017 or something it was still still early on like the Mm -hmm. the front for that but yeah I feel like the whole like also at least I don't go to these but I have a lot of people who are dan like know a lot of people who are dancers there are a lot of like k-pop nights where you can learn the choreography somebody who we (laughs) actually had um, as a guest, um, Clinton, Clinton Wilder, he ha- taught a few classes to K-pop songs. He's a big Luna fan. So of course, uh, or girl group stand. So a lot of his choreography is dealing with girl groups. But I mean, that's another way to interact with your community. Yeah, just, there like- are there are places that do like K-pop um, dance routines. So actually, when I was living with my brother, he was like subjected to K-pop. Mm-hmm. and like absorb some of it so he he used to do dancing so he would go to like dance workshops and they would have a performance at the end um and he joined a few k-pop classes where they would make their own choreography to certain k-pop songs so like that's there's, fun there's a lot of diversity around here he was like you should go i was like i am not getting in front of uh, people <laughs> yeah, I, I, i'm not gonna like i'll dance but not like this, <laughs> you know, I was like, I'm the dance in my, I'm the dance in my room type of person, not, <laughs> you know, not like that, but yeah, it's just like, you have that as an opportunity to also interact with your community, like doing these dance workshops. Um, our good friend, DJ Peter Lowe, he DJs and does K-pop nights. And there's the whole random dance play that we see at KCON, but you know, these, um, local this these smaller cities are starting to do it more locally i i've heard of a couple happening here i've just never been to them just because it's like i don't got time <laughs> but and they're usually on a week night and i'm just like i work <laughs> i work i wish i could but um that's another way and it's just like you get to be around that atmosphere of fans i think that's the one thing in general it's just like if you don't necessarily vibe with a group, just go to hang out with, you know, like-minded people for a bit. Yeah, there's there's already that sort of broken social barrier because we all are here because we like this. So that makes talking to people a lot easier. I've found, mm-hmm. even if it's just unspoken, it's like, you know that we have a sa- the similar interests. So there's right. at least something that we can connect on, even yeah. if it's for a short while. And I think that's what these events are so great for, because especially if you're like me, like I work at home, um, Mm -hmm. I don't go out very often. It's Mm -hmm. only for, you know, go out to eat occasionally. But it's like, if you don't want to do another thing my brother did was like, they have these meetup groups where it's Mm -hmm. like, oh, um, I like to dance. So here's a bunch of people that like to dance or paint. So those things intimidate the shit out of me Mm -hmm. because it's so general, but like, it's it seems just more informal it's like the same kind of thing except it's like k-pop based so yeah it's using the same avenue but it's just more specific i guess so Mm -hmm. i don't know i think i think it's a great way to like meet people make friends the only reason Mm -hmm. i know my k-pop friends here that's what i call them we're more than that now but like is because they knew one of my friends who was into k-pop and she was like hey these people live near you i was like oh cool so we did yeah. like K-pop stuff <laughs> and now we're, yeah. like, you know, really good. Friends. You never know. You could find your, your core K-pop friends. You know, I, um, I'm good friends with somebody who's a YouTuber and big TikToker. I found their channel by chance and we've been friends ever since then. And, um, like I've seen this person grow and it's just like, whoa, that's so cool. You know, but it's like, if you're like, don't be a creep about it obviously don't be creepy 
don't <laughs> please don't that's be the nice number one rule for anything don't be weird like <laughs> don't don't be creepy or weird be polite about it i get it if you're nervous it's understandable but you know just simply if you like start off by something like oh like i like the pin that you have or where did you get that piece of merchandise like that clothing where did you get it something simple like that like don't be afraid to ask these people because they're in this area for a reason you know, and they're here to like interact with you somewhat or like just be in that environment, you know? So I think like it's very repetitive throughout <laughs> today's episode. Just go if you have the chance. If you don't have the money to spend, that's fine. If you can only afford either the food item or the drink item, that's fine. A lot of these cup sleeve events specifically, they're free. They're free. Just buy a drink. And then you get the show your receipt and you get, you know, a drink or you get a photo strip or you get something like this, which I, this is going to uh, make um, Roxy scream a little bit. I got this <gasps> yesterday. <laughs> 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 you might get something if you're lucky enough, if you're there early enough, there might be a little bit of incentives. This was one of the limited things. Okay. I love this him. Is a- I know I you love do. it. It's so pretty. <laughs> it's uh for those who are not watching, um, it is a clear, transparent fan of Hong Jun. Um, this isn't real, and so this is reason why I'm not uh like has like I'm not scared to show it. But this was the other one. It's a oh, it's like a bank card. Yeah, oh, but it's it has cute. it has like their dates and their birthday, and it's a Jomo for Jomo's birthday, and. Obviously, there's a disclaimer. This is not a real card, you know? <laughs> yeah, we're just giving away credit cards. Who needs right. credit? <laughs> right. But I was like, if you're lucky enough and you get there early enough, you know, you could get like these cool little freebies. Like, why not? I even got a little ET swag. Oh, that's so cute. It's really cute. Like, you never know what, like, and even if not, I mean, are you going to really deny free shit? No, that, no, that's where, why <laughs> no. I have so much shit. It's I got all of it for free. For, this for free. Like you don't have to pay anything. Like, come on. Like, even if you just get something as simple as a photo strip and a cute little, this one's a holographic photo card, something like that. Hey, it's something to add to your collection. You know, I, I do think it's a good way. Like if you have trouble going out, mm-hmm. being social, it's a good way to introduce yourself mm-hmm. into that sort of world and it may be like more unconventional but in, at, at the end of the day it's the same thing as like going to a meetup it's just right. like you know you find people that have the same interests as you and then mm-hmm. you meet them that way it's just and you could become friends and or or if you're going to an upcoming concert and you're going by yourself I'm going to one by myself <laughs> um <laughs> uh if you you know that's how you can find like oh I'm going to so let's meet up you know, that like, even though you might not hang out with each other, if you need somebody to just hang out in line with, there's that too, you yeah. know, at least you can meet, like, I'll see you there. I hope you have fun. We're not, if we have different tickets, I'll see you there though. Let's make an effort to meet up and just hang out, even if it's just for a bit. So I think, you know, I hope more and more events come up. Um, one of our writers, uh, Bettina, was mentioning that there weren't any events happening there in Europe for her. And I'm surprised that they they haven't popped up in Europe yet, just because I know how big the K-pop scene is in Europe. But um, she did mention she would love to host one or she would like to have like her dream event would be to have something with the idol coming through. That has happened here in the States, actually. Oh, where? Here in Southern California, I I heard about this. I've seen the fan cams for another one, but um, there was a young girl that was holding a Sam Kim event, and he he surprised her. That I there. I do remember that. That was very cute. Yeah, and then um, there was another girl who was a big Samuel. I know you're a big Samuel um, fan. Um, I like Samuel. He's very cute. He's cute. I like that he's Mexican. To be honest, yes. I'm like, yes, that's my little Mexican boy. <laughs> um this is when Samuel just you know debuted finally solo right um she was hosting I think it was a birthday event another it was another boba event and he rolled through and he's like 
hi and i'm just like my child heck? my son it's just like it's just like what the heck and she she was so happy she was like can i have a picture or anything you never know who's gonna roll through when you do some of these events they surprise you yeah i'm sure they, they know we know they- that idols know what's going on so. uh-huh Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I can't even imagine like how these idols are feeling in Korea because, you know, they do birthday events huge over there or anniversary events. And then imagine just seeing your face plastered. You're like, that's me, <laughs> you know, like that's me. But you can't like say you just be like, oh, and I'm like, oh, they do sometimes go into the subway and like pose with the, the subway. Right. Like, right. Which is just like, obviously, they're showing their appreciation for, you know, their their fan sites and their fans to do that but it's just like you never know like i feel like the big cities you'll if they're if you time it right and you plan it right they may show up uh the only one i could get here is bobby so but he's not coming back anytime soon he's a little busy he's a little busy (laughs) he's a little a little busy for quite some time for a while yeah but i mean his family lives around here that'd be lit i don't know if i could arrange that ever right or it's just like like I said, if you plan it right, like if you happen to know when a certain concert date is, and I'm the only thing that I'm not liking about this whole concert season is just like, oh, here's the date. Tickets are sale, like ticket sales are tomorrow a week later. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> you just announced it. I know. Come on. Catch like, me, uh, catch me doing a, a, a tableau event before uh, Epic High comes here. <laughs> I don't know what like, for though. <laughs> but I'd be like, like, I'll do something. I was considering like, should I do an Eric Nam event? But the only thing is that like the only thing that sucks is that their their um their dates are so like they're in cities like literally a day after the other. Whereas I think for groups that are um staggering their dates a little bit more, it might be easier to plan for that. But also that like don't do an event with that as like the end goal because that's oh yeah oh don't (laughs) don't probably not gonna happen so don't don't go in with the hopes of like they're gonna show up but more of i want people to know like hey i am doing something for the group or for the artists just come through but yeah that's not the end goal don't do it for that oh god no oh no (laughs) i don't think i would even have like the bandwidth to try to be honest it's just so much work and it's just like you're setting yourself up for heartbreak if they don't come through indeed it's so, like, I think the only time it's happened was with Samuel. I haven't yeah, heard it, was, it ever happening any other mm-mm. way. Um, who was, who was here? They were here yesterday. P1 Harmony was here. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. They are in the States, aren't they? Yeah, they're currently in the States. So like, you never know. They're currently hopping around cities right now. They were in New York. I'm pretty sure they're going to be in LA. Can you oh, imagine? Can you imagine if you're running an event at a boba shop and they just like walk in trying to get some boba and then it's like, oh, wait. You're like, (laughs) huh? I don't know how I would act. I'd be so confused. Uh, I would freeze. I can tell you right now, my fight or flight is freeze. So I would just be like, (laughs) I would just be standing there like, don't move. Like a deer in the headlights. Yeah, you're like- Nothing, just stay. (laughs) Right? Like, um- me and my friends we joke around it's like oh if this group happened like you know obviously there it's not gonna happen but like if they happen to go through they joke around it's like jay you're in charge and i'm like what <laughs> you can't just drop this thing i'm just like huh you can't do this and i was just like uh she that she went that way <laughs> you know i'd be i was just like no 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 come back here come back here as much as i'd like to take ownership no this is not my event <laughs> come back here but yeah obviously we're we're jumping into a little more um going off topic but yes i think it at the end of the day if you happen to see one in your area or if you happen to see a pre-order and you can't necessarily make it fight just do it do it it's fun it's don't be so afraid much fun. either don't Mm-mm. be afraid to go no and like you can just start off like there's people they don't even interact with other people they just want the cup sleep and they go and that's fine too Mm-hmm. that's totally fine do what feels comfortable to you but also you know it's okay to get some interaction here and there be safe obviously 
the place I went to, it was mass required the whole entire time. So, you know, do what's comfortable for you within your capacity, obviously with the Ponderosa still happening. If you still don't feel comfortable, don't go. But if you happen to see one, check it out. You never know what you're going to find there. And we haven't, do you want to just jump into the next section? Because we haven't done this in forever. No, we have not. It has been quite, quite a time since we've done an underrated group highlight. Yes. Yes. And Um, so who are we covering today, Roxy? Today we are covering Cypher, which is a new boy group under Rain, which he hasn't released a group since and black and black uh which turned out great so a lot of people were talking about that <laughs> when Cypher i know it's it. just like um yeah his wife was in the in the music video for their debut right was she i don't remember i'll be honest i don't remember <laughs> um, um i see a lot of like debuts because i have to keep track of what's going on so mm-hmm. um, yeah But yeah, so Cypher debuted under Rain Company and they debuted this year. Um, Well, it was announced in 2020 that they would be debuting, but they released their first mini album in March. And they also just recently had a comeback with their second mini album. Um, All things considered, not doing too bad, but at least chart wise and stuff, but, you know, could be better. What, What is your opinion on their music? I like how they are more of a poppy sound. I do like that. Um, My only gripe was with their most recent comeback. And it's not them. It's the way how the music video is edited. (laughs) Um, The CG. The CG was just like, ooh, no. (laughs) I don't like this. I don't like, I had that issue with the Monster X video. I I don't know if it was Gambler. It was probably Gambler. It, It... move too much it hurt my eyes you know there was like there was a jump cut every two seconds I was like please I am one person I can't like put this all together yeah so I get that so it's like it's not them like it's not them because I think they look fantastic for both I watched both their um debut and the most recent one I liked it the only gripe was the music videos because it's just like uh the cg is too much they're they don't look like it but they're very they lead more pop they lead more of the whole like refreshing boy next door type of look um which is you know like sometimes when you look at them you're like i thought their songs would go in harder but they're really cute you Uh, know yeah and which is interesting because uh the oldest one was born in 96 which is pretty old for a debuting group Mm -hmm. so I can't imagine being that age and being told that you have to act like a schoolboy. I mean, they're not necessarily schoolboy, but it is like a young adult, young boy, still like early adult type of concept, if you get what I mean. That it's just like, huh, you don't see this often. Because I feel like a lot of the debuts nowadays are like, we have to be more um hard hitting we have to do that whole bad boy type of vibe whereas these like it's sweet and i think that's what's charming about cypher um i really no, but li- bitches love the hard hitting shit and i'm bitches yes. so like it's harder to get me without that mm-hmm, personally mm-hmm. that's just me though so i mean like diversity wise though you do have a point yeah it's just like you don't see that often happening right now and I just feel like the way what's the name of their most recent comeback I was just watching the music video uh, um, I know the album is blind ah it's also the same um title blind the way how they look did not match necessarily how the sound the song sounded but I was just like I can get by this like huh okay, I haven't listened to the rest of their EP, like the their comebacks or the albums, but based off of their music video, truly like very good potential with this group. Am I wrong to say one of them reminds me of Edon? Uh, I'll be the honest, rapper. I, haven't, I haven't looked closely enough oh. to notice, but- One of their rappers, he's one of their main rappers. I don't know her, his name, but the way he sounds and the way how he kind of looks- is Edon. And I'm like, 
interesting if that we've Edon had a little point. brother if Edon had a little brother or Don it's Don now not Edon sorry I'm so used I'm, to his... I know I'm so used to Edon it's just I was there when Pentagon was formed I'm just used to it I know um he looks like Don's little brother and I was just like and he sounds like him too and I was just like did I am I going a little bonkers <laughs> I know it's like I know I'm tired but I'm just like this is this is cute, you know. I'm just like, huh. He's he definitely sticks out from the group because of the way how he sounds. But overall, this group has really nice vocals too. They have a good, they can dance, which is also another good thing. And so, I mean, potential, good potential out of this group. I'm not saying no. I would like to see them do the more hard hitting kind of stuff though, just because the last two comebacks have been more on the sweeter side for how they look and vibe but you know ready for something a little bit more I don't want to say mature but you get what I mean I will say that apparently their most recent mini album has much more like musical diversity than the first one so they do have like one of those hard-hitting like hip-hop songs on there okay um I just know this because me and did a review. So I was like Mm, reading mm -hmm. about it, but it apparently has much more depth than the previous one, which shows a very good direction for growth because we don't want stagnation. We want growth. Right. And I I mean, mean, like think about and black, right. They're technically the older brother, you know, because it was created from rain. Technically. (laughs) Technically. Um, And black, you know, they, they, I don't want to say they struggled with finding their note of how they would do things, but I think that it, it's gonna, I hope it just continues to go well for a cipher. <laughs> um, of course, um, they're, they're testing the waters right now. And I'm glad that at least we have two EPs all within the same year. You know, that, that shows a lot of promise, like a lot of other groups, they don't get to have like, a comeback within the same year as when they debuted so there's promise there so i say you know if you're looking for another new group to listen to listen to cypher i think there it'll be somebody's favorite and i definitely check out mean's review or any of the reviews that we write up on cypher because it might come into more right <laughs> yeah i'm not you know i'm not the big fan of the super poppy sound so i was like yeah. not the title tracks i'm just like eh but you know just knowing that there's some sort of growth in their the music that they released mm-hmm. does you know prove for me at least that there would be something there in the future so we'll see you know what i miss i was talking about it with some of my friends yesterday at the event we were just going off on a tangent i miss when groups would do a more fully fleshed out like cinematic type of music video like a true like story you know rather than just put them in a box here here's like the set interact with the set I'm like I really would like to see like whether it's Cypher or these newer groups come out with like a like give me a drama in in a music you know oh that's true kingdom that's 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 what you're looking for (laughs) that is true I've heard things but yeah I was just like I would like to see Cypher do something a little bit more darker a little bit more gritty I don't think they don't necessarily have to go into the hip hop realm, but doing something that's a little bit more in that kind of slower tempo type of feel and sound and see how they do with that one. Just because it would give, it would be a nice change up from their two com- or two that they have, two cha- main titles that they have. So yeah, that's my thoughts on it. But yeah, wow, we haven't done an underrated group in a long time. I know. It's been it's been a few months, I would say, since yeah, you know, recording. But yeah. So um if you're interested in diving into Cypher, we do we did cover both of their both their debut and their comeback. So you can go on our website, search for it and check it out if you are interested in doing that and check out any of the other things that we have going on. We have a very active team now so we have a lot of columns that are active and fun and what else is coming out soon the exo mini zine yeah will it be out by the time this episode is out um no it is in printing right now okay fun facts yes um yeah 
soon. The pre-order period will be over very shortly. And once it is, the prices will go up because we did have to end up paying more to get them printed. So, um, but yeah, so they're not they're on really, our website for that. They're really cute. If you haven't seen the teasers for them, who like our art team. Wow. <laughs> Those yeah. look really cool. And the design, like, all of you guys on the design team, all of everybody who worked on this issue works so hard and it looks so good. So you don't want to miss out on that one. No, go, uh, go on our website, uh, grab your link. You can get a digital copy if you don't want to spend as much money. Um, the print one though is always very nice. I have a copy of all of our magazines. So they are very high quality print. And of course, if you're an EXO fan, it is like the perfect thing. It'll make you feel nostalgic for, you know, for how long they've been around it's been 10 years it's wild almost nine jesus. years Jesus. yeah jesus <laughs> there's a lot and, me you know, and k-pop <laughs> there's lots of of great information in it so i highly recommend picking it up and of course we do also have cheap shipping options if that's your concern and we would do if there was enough interest we would do group orders uh overseas and have some sort of um free shipping available based on the amount of orders that we get so yeah that has been this episode of the craze cast we'll see you in the next one bye bye, bye.